going on YouTube, in this problem we have to prove that if a divides b, then a divides bx for all integers x. I haven't done this before, so it should be a little bit exciting. Uh, let's try it, let's prove. So this is an if-then statement. So when you're proving an if-then statement, you always assume this part here, and then you just have to prove this part here. So we'll start by writing down our assumptions. So suppose that uh, a divides b. Suppose that a divides b. And so now the natural thing to do is to write down what this means. So what does it mean for a to divide b? It means that b is a multiple of a. So this means there exists an integer n, right? There exists an n in the set of integers, right? Such that b is a multiple of a. So b is equal to n a. Right, so what do we have to show? Huh, let's see. We have to show that a divides bx, right? So what does that mean? That means that bx is a multiple of a, right? So again, the goal, let's think about this. We have to show that a divides bx. That means bx is a multiple of a. That means bx is equal to an integer times a. That's what we have to show. So here we have b equals na, okay? So we have to show that bx is equal to an integer times a for any x, right? It has to be true for all x. So let's do it, let's be pro about it. Thus, for all x, z, we can multiply both sides by x, right, to get this. So bx equals nax. And multiplication here is commutative and associative, right? You have integers. So you can write this as nx a, where nx is an integer, right? Because n is an integer and x is an integer, therefore nx is an integer. So we have that bx is a multiple of a, right? bx is an integer times a for every x, right? For every x. So this means that uh, a divides bx, and we finished our proof. So kind of cool, it was kind of fun. Uh, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, thanks for visiting my channel. I hope this helps you improve your proof writing skills. Take care.